Hello again StroKwap, today I am bringing you a build video for Moss and I've decided to call this the Deathless Grenadier simple we're using a Deathless Relic, a Bloodletter class mod we're using a shield that I prefer to be the transformer but you can also use another one I like the one that gives you amp damage, the rerouter the Hex Grenade, the recurring or Murftacular is a great choice. So if you have one, regardless of what element, uh, it's perfect to get those heals and regenerations going. Then you might want to do like me, use a Butcher or multiple Butchers. Or you can use any other weapon that has some explosions and splash damage or one that has a good magazine size. I think the build works with uh, almost any weapon and I like to use the Butcher because I think the damage I'm getting for single target from it is nice and I barely need to reload which uh, is another good bonus from using the Butcher. This build can solo all types of content uh, on Mayhem 3 through Vault Hunter mode such as uh, the different water circles or the different trials. Of course when the build is min-maxed with the proper mods, anointments etc it will be more effective and do better than me and of course someone might be able to play it better but let's quickly show you how I've set up the skills and the bonuses I'm getting from my mod currently for the footage that you're seeing and after that we'll go further down the gear route to show you in detail about different weapons and configurations that you might want to experiment with. So for the skill setup, the skill point evocation, I decided to go for a majorly demolition woman, a little bit of uh, bottomless max, which is completely optional but I think it's kind of uh, good to have it, to have that synergy with the butcher and the armor again from the demolition woman tree and then you see you see here I've spent some points into Shield of Retribution and since I have one point into Phalanx Doctrine from the mod I didn't feel the need to to put more points into this tree to unlock it. I tried playing with more points here and less points here. I tried playing without without the capstone. It's also viable, it's also good. It's still gonna last you. Here you see I had a very Wookie drop to, to get a mod that gives me plus 3 on desperate measures that actually has somewhat decent stats this is the mod, I'm gonna go into detail about the gear in a moment uh, in the next uh, segment but that's, that's just quickly to see the mod, what it gives it's not the best but it's kind of decent stats so this gives me 3 points and that bumps up the gun damage based on how low my HP is to 100% from 50 and I have one point on thin red line which gives us a bit of extra shield based on losing some health before the deathless is applied. So here we get gun damage damage reduction while the shields are active and we always have shields active. Then Moses maximum shield is increased, then we have drowning in brass for gun damage, fire rate uh, minus for, for the price and then experimental munitions for extra incendiary can either go for extra munitions or you can maybe even get full can of whoopers if you feel like you would be using uh, the iron bear often. You can even get this if you think you would be reloading. I mostly don't reload when I play it so I think for my setup this is the best. I do use iron bear only for bosses, only when I want to apply this plus 15% enemy damage taken. Basically, when you have a group, or even when you're solo, you use this rocket to make the enemy take more damage, and I also use this one. You can either go for two of those, or for one of those and a big nuke, but I prefer using the active tracking because it lets me know which target the bear is shooting at. So when I see those three circles, I know the bear is shooting rockets at this target, which means probably target softening is on the same um, enemy that active tracking is shooting. It has fast reload speed so it's pretty nice. Here we have some bonus incendiary damage then we have 
a chance to get ammo and grenade replenished by doing splash damage. Here we have all splash damage can double in size, then there's auto bear which can be kept at 100% of time with this setup. Then we have uh, the grenades being able to crit and since we're using the hex grenade, regardless whether it's a uh, shock, cold, uh, radiation or whatever other element you find, uh, that's another crit chance uh, on top of uh, pull the holy pin because the grenade can crit itself. Then there's vampire, restores plus 20% of missing health per enemy hit when you do damage with the drone grenade. That's amazing because with the hex we keep hitting the enemy, we keep uh, restoring HP and while we're restoring HP we're actually restoring shield due to the blood letter relic. Now uh, this I had to put some points here. The options were either iron bear related skills or put some points on why can't I carry all these grenades. So that's why I put two points here in order to have enough to put a point into short fuse. If you think you want to get rid of short fuse and uh, get rid of this, that's fine. This is something I would strongly recommend as a last means of uh, survival. If you end up getting down, there are some things that could end up one-shotting you. Some of the anointed enemies have those skills. So this would allow you to throw some grenades while being downed, while while doing in the fight for your life phase. So some options you can do is uh, remove that one point then remove those two points. Then you would have three points that you can spend either on Phalanx Doctrine to get more damage and shields for, for those stacks or into Drowning and Brass or just spread them around in between those skills. I don't think this is needed. So another thing that might be good synergy is this because I am using butchers. Normally I would actually go for a quad butcher setup, something like this. Four different element butchers and this is Hyperion. So we have four Hyperion weapons and a Hyperion shield. So I'm gonna go about uh, the synergy later in the, in the gear section but that's five pieces. Five pieces, two percent per matching piece that's 10% magazine size per point invested here so you can even remove this uh, like you can remove uh, two or three points even all four points so I think you need at least one point here and then you can put those here for extra magazine size now let's go ahead and tell you a bit about the gear choices I've made for the gear as I said in the skill section, I like to go with four butchers. But every now and then I do three butchers and I put something like a cutsman or a packing devastator or even something uh, like uh, I like Wushan Skull, I like a, sh a Shreddifier. So there's a lot of different uh, guns that you might put, just use whatever you think is fine. This build works well regardless of the weapon you're using, but if the weapon has some good anointment for damage to badass enemies or maybe to, to get you some extra splash damage like this one, or whatever else that benefits your build, this build it would be nice. Splash damage weapons were great, so a Hive would be a great choice, a Fwacker would be a great choice. So just think about what weapons you like using, uh, as I said, any base would be fine. I personally use it with the Butcher because I don't need to reload most of the times when using Butchers. And having different elements was something that took me a lot of time to farm them, so I'm assuming not everyone would have them. And uh, this is completely normal. Take your time, find the best anointments, first find the best bases you like and then start farming for better drops with uh, regards to parts like more damage or more accuracy, more reward speed, whatever you prefer. Then try to find the better anointments. For the relic you need a blood letter for this build to work the way it does. And uh, I mean for the for the class mod, you need a blood letter and I'm strongly suggesting to look for one that gives you a point into Phalanx Doctrine and preferably three or four points into um, Desperate Measures. This would be pretty solid uh, for you. So try to look for splash damage, grenade damage, area of effect damage, things like that. 
uh, in that. Grenade radius is also not bad and magazine size is great. Before I was using this one uh, which was giving me splash damage radius, grenade radius, shoot capacity but it wasn't giving me enough damage on desperate measures which, which means when I was shooting with my guns I wasn't doing that much, uh, that much damage. Shield capacity is also nice, but it's not uh, the best because you you don't really need that that much. Here I was using uh, this one before, uh, a death list that gives me magazine size, but I really didn't think uh, it's worth it uh, sacrificing two bad rows such as radiation resistance and shoot recharge delay, which I really didn't need. Uh, and I really didn't find myself needing the, the last stand that much. Most people prefer going for a snow drift deathless. And I guess that's fine. Snow drift is a good ability for mobility. But I decided to try and experiment with uh, this one. Elemental projector deathless. In some areas and some places you would be able to set yourself on fire, shock yourself and so on. Which would uh, in turn increase your elemental damage from this elemental effect that you're suffering by 183%. This one I've got is uh, kind of bad because it gives me 40% fight for your wife and 37% uh, fight for your wife movement speed. You would want area of effect damage, shotgun damage maybe or Hyperion damage if you're using uh, the Butcher. Look for area of effect damage or splash damage or things that benefit the build. Uh, I think this is a great thing to experiment with. I'm a bit less tanky when I'm when I'm using uh, when I'm using the rerouter shield, but I did play around with it and it it did work fine. Having a rerouter shield would uh, bump up your damage a bit, and it's not a bad choice. But if you want to be more tanky and if you want to make sure that uh, any electric damage is actually healing you, it's actually replenishing your shields, the transformer is a great choice. In any case, try using one of those uh, anointments that benefit you. I, I would strongly suggest going for after exiting Iron Bear gain 75 increased shields and health, but if you think you would be using it more often, go and get uh, the anointment I've got on my transformer. This is another anointment that may be nice, but it's not the best. So those are just two shields I can strongly recommend. A stop gap is also fine. Anything with a lot of capacity is fine for this build and with some decent, uh, decent uh, bonuses and anointments. But the, the key shield, if you want to be able to even heal yourself with grenades, with electricity, would be the transformer. So shock grenades can heal you. For the grenade, strongly suggested recurring hex. If you can get recurring hex, uh, Murf Tacuer hex. It works almost the same, just one less explosion. Uh, but uh, in the end, it's still six uh, grenades uh, that are attacking the enemy with those beams. Uh, if you can get uh, Murf Tacuer or recurring, try to get one that splits into two or one that splits into three. Uh, or even one that is a single one and, uh, and there's like uh, a clone, like a cloning one, splits into two, I think. So mitosis and cloning, I think, were the mods. Those are good grenades. That's it for the gear, guys. Pick anything you like, Kutzman, Russian Skull, Ogre, whatever uh, weapons, I think they would all work well, as long as they have an element that uh, is useful or a good anointment, just experiment. Yesterday I was experimenting with all sorts of weapons and anything seemed to work fine, but the butcher and some rocket launchers and stuff and the flacker uh, gave me the best uh, possible options. Butcher is a world drop, so anything can drop it. You don't have to farm specific bosses, whereas this is a specific boss drop. There's uh, this sniper. The head explosion that only drops from the main Vark, which is also a very fun thing. And the Luda is good on any build, any class, so you might want to try using one as well. I'm now going to leave you with some extra footage to see. This is the fifth final round of the Swater Shaft run I was doing when recording footage for the build. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching the video, 
if you want to see more Borderlands 3 content such as build videos or other types of guides you might want to subscribe to my channel and you can do that by hitting the button at the bottom right side in addition to this uh, at the end of the video you would be able to see my social media if you want to follow me on those such as Twitter, Facebook, Twitch and Mixer and if you've liked the video you can let me know by hitting the button and if you didn't like something about it please let me know in the comments what this is so I can see if I can do something about it
thank you again for watching this video keep it cool folks and until next time